Welcome all you plus two comedy modifiers back to the stream. Welcome back to the Phobos ARG. Phobos 803053. I've never noticed this. I'll just do a quick Google of that. See if anything pops up. You guys on Twitter or something? Nope. All right, nothing, nothing too interesting coming up here. But I thought that was interesting. Okay. So we got a new episode of uh, Be Not Afraid, which, like I said, I think this is more of a passive experience now. But we're going to go through this and try to see if there's anything we have to find here in the latest episode. So like I said, these come out on Fridays, but I play on Monday, so this is already three days old. But let's take a look at the next episode of Be Not Afraid. It's, I, I do want to throw this out there, though. Be Not Afraid, episode numeral one. Uh, Be Not Afraid, episode word two. Just a little suspicion, in my opinion. All right, let's give this a watch. Hey, I'm Marissa Torsney. Um, I live in Temecula, California. I honestly think this whole video introduction thing is pretty stupid. Smooth. But it's for a grade. So, um, I like to run. I do track. I usually spend my time, um, running around campus. That's where I usually warm up or I spend my time with my friends. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, I also got a scholarship for track. So that's pretty cool. I'm excited about that. And yeah. That's it. Good afternoon, Temecula High student body. Just a quick reminder that today's track and field meeting begins in 10 minutes. Go Wolves. Oh. Oh. When I tell a joke, you've probably heard it before. That's where the monster is. A wonderful tell. thing, cause everyone listens when I start to sing. What I want is to sing it out loud. So I say, thank you for the music, the songs I'm singing. Thanks for all the joy they're bringing. Who could live without it? I ask in all honesty, what would life be without a song? Of a dance, what are we? So I say thank you for the music. Down for everybody. 
What a joy. What a chance. Thank you for the music, the songs I'm singing. Thanks for all the joy they're bringing. Who can live without it? I ask in all honesty, what would life be without a song or a dance? What are we? So I say thank you for the music, for giving it to me. Thank you for the music, for giving it to me. <laughs> it's another ABBA song. So let let's take a look real quick. Thank you for the music. Thank you for the music. Mamma Mia. All right, so it's, yeah, it's, it's all, okay, so Broadway, or uh, Mamma Mia, no, come on. Broadway. Okay, so I think what's, what's happening here is what was said to us in the beginning was this web series is not released in order. And I thought they meant what we've seen in the Phobos part. I'm now thinking that it's Be Not Afraid that's out of order. But all, the order is tied to the, le to the song titles of Mamma Mia. So, where... Is everything? Is this not all of them? All right, under attack was fourteen, and then that was thank you for the music. Which is four. Okay, so that would imply that what we just saw was the first episode or, or the fourth episode so it came before the previous episode that causes a lot of problems because we're seeing a progression of the list so I would like to put out the theory that they got Joseph Bateman first and then Marissa in their timeline. In our timeline, in our reality, they got Marissa first. Or at least before Joseph. That's what I think is trying to be displayed here. I think that makes sense. Actually, that makes a lot of sense in that does this say anything about the Temecula Five? We haven't read this yet. And this was, of course, this is interesting. It seems to be starting... Th this might be a continuation of the previous one, because it's starting with the word and, which is very suspicious. And it's not capitalized, so that's not the beginning of the sentence. Uh, and this was, of course, because of the career-driven... All right, hold on. Let's let's go back to this. This would also imply that they're classmates. Oh, this might not be the beginning either. All right. What what are my notepads right now? Uh, I don't need this anymore. Okay, that was that was old. Um, 
uh, uh, decadent mind stuff. Let me just grab the descriptions really quick. Because what I'm saying, if the if we're getting part of the story here, my guess is this is going to be the fourth part of the story. So I'm going to say that, that it comes before this. Because I think this is under attack, which is track... Fourteen. So I'm saying this is fourteen, and then this will be four. This is this is just my current theory. I'm going to read it that way. And this was, of course, because of the career-driven and ever-involved Miss Tornsey. Hold on. Okay, so this is not the teacher. Okay, I just want to check. Uh, Miss Tornsey was often too busy to spend time with her friends. Classmates have told ETC News, exclusively we should add, that Tornsey was especially close with the anonymous confidant from the, for the purpose of the confidentially of an ongoing police investigation. We would refer to the individual as T. T was apparently the source of a light-hearted mockery from a majority of his close friends, but Tornzi was particularly... Okay, so these two definitely don't line up, so I think my theory is still pretty accurate here. When the Temecula Five first went missing, the Locals didn't suspect foul play. After all, the small town in sunny SoCal is no stranger to hoaxes and pranks orchestrated by bored teens. But <clears throat> excuse me. But when young Joseph's father, Pierce Bateman, reported that he had seen with a friend and classmate by the name of okay, interesting. All right. So here's my current working theory then. I'm gonna have to. I say thank you. I just want to get to. As in all honesty, like what would life be without a song or a dance? What are we? So I say thank you for the music, for giving it to me. That's such a cool ass mask. Thank you for the music. For giving it to me. Pop. <laughs> she, she, now she's center stage, which is very odd. So now, thank you for the music by Ava's going to play, and I'm going to mute it so I don't get copyright struck. Uh, they kept saying the Temecula Five. My belief is the Temecula Five are these five, and Timothy is something, is an extra one. Uh, and I kept saying, like, well, maybe Timothy, do, why doesn't Timothy count? I think, based on our experiences here, Timothy is the last person that the Angels, or the Justice Department, we can call them, get hit on their list, because it's on the bottom of their list. But in our timeline, I think they got Timothy first. So, Joseph Bateman, no. We don't know who is first in our timeline. Right now, it's most likely Marissa, because Marissa, we're believing, is going to be episode four of this series. But, I mean, four is, is pretty early, but the other three episodes could be these three getting caught, so we don't know. Uh, but the idea is they got Timothy earlier, if we're watching this in real time in our timeline. Like, the, these events are actually happening, let's say. Uh, Timothy's been gone for a while for us. But maybe... Well, now I don't know. My, my thought is that the five kids here go missing or are killed and they find the bodies. Uh, after 
in our timeline, the Justice Department got rid of Timothy and threw him in the void or whatever. So that's why Timothy's not included in these. It's because he's they don't realize that they're related. That's my current working theory. Right, I'm going to let this play out without music so I don't get copyright struck, but just to see if anything like pops up or anything. Didn't seem to be anything there. Uh, I'm just checking, like, one check, the first first frame. First frame's a good place to hide stuff. Nothing seems to be hiding in the dark here. In the dark, dark. Interesting stuff here. I also, I want to call this move out. She seems to be hiding her breath as if that is the thing that is attracting our, our angel here, which would imply some sort of knowledge. Because I, I don't think it's like a don't scream. Because I don't think it's a, a cover the mouth, don't scream type thing. Because she's also covering her nose. So I think it's like a a protection thing that way. I forgot I can also... That's like a weird smiley face. Um, this is interesting. Deception. It's like a door that says deception. Uh, I haven't brought this up yet, but someone from the KDA sent me this, which looks... Very similar. So, I didn't know what this was, so I, I have it pulled up just in case we had time to listen to it. And we do. But I want to continue to just kind of thumb through this real quick to see if there's anything else I want to spot. But that definitely seems to be a call out to this uh, podcast or reading or whatever it is. Just kind of skimming through it, seeing if there's anything of note here. God, look at that mask. I really want to see some people cosp... I thought maybe her eyes had been, like, edited. Thank you for the music. I don't know, this looks a little bit suspicious, but I don't know what it could be. Um... Checking through here, seeing if anything else jumps out at me. Because, like, this seems so suspicious now. And, like, knowing that, now I want to, like, look for everything. Don't know what that is. That's a bit odd. It seems very specific that that got in the shot on how that was shot. All right, let's give this a listen then. Welcome, foolish listener. I am happy to have you here, to know that you have accepted my invitation to witness events of the unspeakably macabre variety. Be warned, for the following story is certain to chill you to your very core. I felt the wind in my hair. There was a great weightlessness to it, as if each strand of fibrous cuticle and medulla were themselves conscious, caught in unending yet ultimately aimless attempts at attaining a kind of freedom. They burst energetically from my scalp, disordinate and chaotic, moving to the furthest extent that they could while rooted to the firm interior of my porous skull. I felt a brief tingle of envy for those thousand lofty strands. They were free to move as they pleased, without any worry for outcome or precedent. I was suspended amid a dark place. Zero. I got zero hits. Maybe I get rid of the D? Uh, not right now.
All right, this name means nothing. So, all right, so this is probably created just for this. Very interesting. All right, so you, I'm sorry for interrupting, but you were, or Mr. Deadly David, but you were talking about hair? Although floating or falling, I couldn't say. The sensation was a peculiar one, the type of feeling which one finds difficult to describe. At the time, I was convinced of an upward swell of air or wind, the culprit of the newfound buoyancy of my hair. It was directional, certainly. I looked up. I saw before me then, suddenly, several white doors. Though I don't know how I knew, I could sense that the door I opened, if indeed I was to open any, would permanently alter the course of my life. The three doors closest to me had painted upon them a word, a different word for each door. I could faintly make out the word on the door closest to me. Deception. What could it mean? I had no clue. But I felt that this apparently endless chasm would close on me, choke the life from my body if I didn't make a choice. And so... I reached out my hand. Closer and closer, I willed my fingers to reach for the doorknob. I felt my hair rise at the sensation of the cold, polished steel. Slowly, carefully, I began to turn the doorknob. I paused. Something is wrong. My free hand floats with haste to my face, or could it even be called that anymore? My eyes, nose, mouth, they were wrong somehow. My features, my facial features, they were, they were missing. My features were missing. Why were my features missing? I felt the involuntary reflex to vomit, but there was no place to expel it from. My features were missing. This is all I could think about as my hand slipped on the metal of the doorknob. As the door with the word deception written upon it began to open, my eyes reappeared, but I immediately wished they hadn't, for as the door fully opened, I saw... The features you've been missing are waiting for you with Spotify Premium. Unlock ad-free music and unlimited <laughs> skips on any device. Plus, download your music and listen offline. Even search and play exactly what you're looking for with On Demand. A world of premium is waiting. Come back to a better way of listening. Tap the banner to learn more. Mwah. Chef's kiss on that bit. That was incredible. Uh, so, are, are we meant to interpret this that that is Timothy talking because we believe that it is Timothy talking to us in this video because at the end it says Timothy uh, Timothy you see it right there um, this is kind of him falling through the void which is being described in this story um, so it, it should be noted as well that his eyes reappear that doesn't or eyes appear it doesn't mean that his correct eyes are we meant to believe that he's one of the observer like angels now and has all those eyes across there very interesting uh who are you deadly david watermelon uh spooky and frightening tales there is a di a difference That's that's all you got for me here? Can I get more information from you? Deadly David Reads? Deadly David Reads. I don't know how we, we came upon this, but uh, we did. Or at least the KDA did, and they were nice enough to send that to me. So very interesting. We got the door that says Deception, which we see in this video here. 
But like it should also be pointed out. Because we see it, yeah, it's right there. I'm singing. Right. So we could, in theory, believe that the void is on the other side of this, and this is where the protagonist of that story. I don't want to say it's Timothy for sure, but we could believe that. That this is where they came out. It's quite possible. But the, the, the story also mentions three doors, but he only goes through deception. There's another door. For all the joy they're bringing, who can live without it? I ask in all honesty, what? Like... This could be a white door far in the background with a different word on it here, but I can't quite make it out. So those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts on episode two. A lot of weird things here. Comments are turned off. That's an interesting choice. And then that's just some... Uh, Oh, they, they Darth Vadered it. <laughs> um, all right, so the, there's no comments here, so nobody nobody's dropped anything interesting. Give it a like. Um, might did I not ring the bell? I've rung the bell. Look at me, be supporting a creator. Um, yeah, I think that might be all that we have to talk about here today. So we're we're gonna end a couple minutes early. Uh, but I think I think we have a couple good theories in place right now uh, with the David Reeds uh, seeming to tie into this and also the idea that this is out of order and everything's going to be an ABBA song. So I, I, I think we have pieces in place. We just don't have all the pieces. So we're going to have to wait until next week. Hopefully there will be an episode next week. Next week is Black Friday, so I don't know if there will be an upload. But I hope so. I hope you all have a fantastic Thanksgiving. And while I got you here, uh, I started a brand new YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Plus Two Wrestling. It is hosted by Scott Holiday, a guy that looks like, sounds like, and is me. And uh, I talk about professional wrestling. So if you're interested in that, I'll put something on screen for uh, that right now. And you can click on that now that you're done watching this video. But thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Plus Two Comedy Gaming and Plus Two Wrestling so you can catch up on all my past live streams. And uh, there will not be any streams uh, this, coming up, this coming week because of uh, Thanksgiving. So have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I will see you all next time.